When it comes to a mid-range ultra portable laptop, Micro Center has a great selection. And today we're looking at what I would call an ultra portable, ultra portable. I mean, just look at how compact this is. This is the HP Omnibook 7 Aero. And this is a wonderfully compact all day carry laptop weighing in at just 2.2 pounds or exactly one kilogram. And since Jinko jeans are back in style, I can actually fit this one in my pocket. But don't be fooled by the Omnibook small stature. There's plenty of power packed inside with the new AMD Ryzen AI7 350 CPU, which is is their new series of AI enhanced chips with a built-in NPU featuring 50 tops for AI processing, as well as an SOC design with 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5X memory and an integrated AMD Radeon 860M graphics. And that is paired with one terabyte of SSD storage. So at this price, you are getting a lot of performance in a compact device. Check the link in the description below to find out more. This Omnibook 7 Aero has a crisp and sharp display with a WQXGA resolution or 2560 by 1600, which is a way easier way to understand resolution. And for being a 13.3 inch laptop, that is a great resolution for sharpness. And it also has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So it's a little bit taller than the usual 16 by nine. This also has a 90% screen to body ratio. So HP has really maximized the pixel density and total display size that's crammed into this compact laptop. And speaking of body ratio, the keyboard to body ratio is pretty good as well. I really like this backlit full-size keyboard and it has large, easily legible print that's right on the keys. And it actually feels pretty good to type on. And while I do always miss having a numpad with these smaller laptops, frankly, it's better to be without one because your typing will be more centralized on this device rather than being offset to the left due to the numpad. Now the trackpad, it's pretty standard overall. It works as expected and it's large enough on the real estate that's available here. The front camera is a five megapixel camera with a privacy shutter and with the AI enhancements in Windows as well as what HP is offering, you'll get good visual and good audio fidelity for video calls. The battery is rated between 12 to 15 hours depending on the workload and it can charge to 50% in three minutes with the included 65 watt USB-C charger. For I.O., on the right side, you have an HDMI 2.1 port for external monitors and two 10 gigabit per second USB-C ports, as well as a 10 gigabit per second USB-A port. Now on the left side, there's a five gigabit per second USB-A port and that always useful 3.5 millimeter audio jack. I hope that never goes away. Wireless connectivity is looking pretty good as well with Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. So let's get hands-on with the HP Omnibook 7 Aero. Now, first and foremost, I have the webpage up here on microcenter.com. So always check microcenter.com for the best current deals. This is powered by the AMD AI7350 processor and it also has those AMD Radeon 860M integrated graphics. So you have eight cores, 16 threads. There's some pretty decent power here. I wanna demonstrate just a couple of different use cases. So this is really meant for general productivity. So your office work, things of that nature, and it's gonna handle that just fine while keeping your battery life very healthy. First and foremost, if you go to the camera, that'll be the first obvious place where you can see usage for AI. And HP actually has this enhanced lighting feature that's actually, it's amusing. It basically turns your monitor into a ring light by putting this large white circle here. And it's supposed to take your monitor and leverage that brightness to create sort of a fill light. So when you put your face here, there is a little bit of like a catch light in the eyes and I can see a little bit of fill in my eyes. It's not making a tremendous difference. I think on some brighter displays, it would make a much bigger difference. Or if you're in a very dark room, it would make a big difference, but we're pretty well lit in here. There's a couple of like funny settings here. So you can make it as big or as small as you want. You can do different shapes and that's just for their sort of ring light built-in feature. Windows also has its AI features for audio and for video. So with background blurring, AI enhancements there, and it actually does a pretty good job. You can't even see that we have a camera over my shoulder. I'll turn this off completely. There we go. So that's what the whole room looks like. Standard or portrait blur, standard blur, which I kind of prefer because that really blurs out the room. But you can see in terms of performance, this is really leveraging that NPU. So that NPU, it's a low powered processor. Um, it's specifically meant for AI use. 
and that's what's accelerating this background removal. It's great for audio enhancements, so if you are on a Teams call in a noisy area and you're using that built-in dual array microphone on the top up here, it's gonna clean you up and make you sound way better than you normally would. So that really does go a long way. Now this is a Copilot PC, so this does come with Copilot built in. Touch of a button, you can just bring up Copilot right there. And anything that you wanna use Copilot for, if you wanna help generate some ideas for your next task or project, you know, it helps you with Word docs, PowerPoints, things like that. You do have to set up the subscription for Copilot uh, to get the more enhanced features integrated into Office 365. And we've done some videos about that that you can check out. I always like to look at these laptops and think of it from a real world use case. If I'm on the go, I want something for my emails, Teams, Zoom, all of that kind of stuff. But it is nice to have just enough power to handle some of the extra tasks that I really need to do. If your job deals with photos in any capacity, then Photoshop, I mean, that's just a must have, right? So I actually have a pretty high res file here. This was shot on our Sony a7R5, which is a 62 or 60 megapixel sensor. So there's a lot of resolution here. And this is a picture I took of some GPUs here in the studio. In terms of performance, like we're actually looking pretty good. Scrubbing on large images, that's always a pretty good indicator for performance with Photoshop. And then as you sort of just create a lot of extra layers, if you're just trying to do things like, you know, your simple clone stamps and things like that, like it's performing really fine. It has that integrated AMD Radeon graphics. It has plenty of cores. So you can do general basic Photoshop tasks here with ease. So that's always a big plus and the performance is clearly there. Obviously I'm plugged in to get the maximum performance out of this arrow. So another program I wanna highlight is a program called Helicon Focus. This is actually a really specialized piece of software that's used for focus stacking. So this is another you know, image enhancement type of program like Photoshop, but it's specifically for focus stacking. If you do macro photography or jewelry photography, which I love doing on the side, this is a program that I use a lot. This is actually a pretty intensive program because it's going to slam that CPU. Uh, and you can see we have everything up here in our task manager so you can see the utilization for the CPU. We can run just a quick demo that's built in. So it takes all of these images and it creates this fully in focus image and it actually did it relatively quickly. That was pretty fast. And that's 24 images that it took, stack them all together. You see it hits basically all the processors. It likes to hit every core. So if you're using a 24 core CPU or just an eight core CPU, it will hit every core possible. So actually passes the test there. It performed pretty well, handles pretty well zooming in, like looking around. So that's actually pretty good. And this is a fairly high res demo that they give you. And it's a photo of a, of a bug. Again, when it comes to mixed use case, your general productivity, that's kind of the easy one, right? But when you start getting into your more creative tasks or your tasks that really are more demanding of the performance of your device. This is actually doing pretty well so far. Again, light tasks in a pinch. If you really need to get those things done, it is available to you. One thing I want to highlight here is not just photo, but also video. So another program I wanted to try very quickly was DaVinci Resolve, which is one of my video editing programs. And this is where we're starting to see some of the limitations of this laptop. And that's not because this laptop is underpowered, it's because really this laptop is not specifically meant for video editing. Everything is loading in now, it's still chugging along pretty okay. Um, but this is a pretty chunky video file here that I have. This is all shot on our Sony FX3. Um, we're getting some playback, like it's playing back pretty okay, but I'm getting some drop frames, so it's gonna take some time for it to sort of catch up. It's starting to smooth out. So again, this is another case of in a pinch, if I really, really, really needed to, it can actually do it. It's playing back at 23976 right now, so it's actually playing back in real time. So if I needed to cut and edit and sort of scrub through the timeline, that's available to me. We're really hitting the performance wall here because we're maxing out our memory. Our integrated GPU is definitely having a harder time keeping up with everything here. Our CPU is doing okay, but Again, this is where, if this is the type of work you do regularly, you would like to look into a laptop that will have a discrete GPU instead of an integrated GPU. This device is perfectly fine for everyday use. We're just pushing the limitation a little bit further. So another thing I wanted to show, can this run Doom? Yes, it can. 
can't run Doom Dark Ages. I tried, I couldn't get it to run, but this is Doom 2016, which is now nine years old. And this game is very well optimized. I mean, it runs on my Steam Deck, it runs on a variety of other hardware. Um, but I just wanted to showcase that it can run games, even though this is not a gaming laptop, nor should it be expected to be a gaming laptop. Again, that's where you need that discrete GPU. This is really just for kind of fun, just to showcase. I'm getting an FPS average jumping anywhere from about 56 to like 65. It's really jumping all over the place. And this is at the lowest preset uh, possible. It can do it but it's not really meant for it. This is an everyday carry laptop that's really meant for productivity tasks, but the simple fact that, you know, you can run some games, that's a cool little added bonus. I think the big takeaway here is for this compact, ultra portable laptop, it can really punch above its weight pretty well. You can handle some more intensive tasks when needed, but it still has all the power that you need for general everyday productivity, general everyday office work, and it's a really great all-day carry. Comparatively, the HP Omnibook 7 Arrow holds its own against other ultra portables in this price range. It definitely offers plenty of performance in this lightweight package. Whether you're doing general office work or browsing for recipes online, this is the perfect everyday laptop. Stop by your local Micro Center to get your hands on the HP Omnibook 7 Aero, and don't forget to ask about those protection plans to keep your laptop safe from whatever issues life throws your way. And if you don't have a Micro Center near you, then be sure to comment hashtag I want a Micro Center near me.